Okay, I'm not sure how long these lectures are, but um, I think today might be a pretty long day. This is the last section in the textbook that we're talking about uh, for chapter two, section 211. And we want to rank resonance structures, okay? Sometimes for a given molecule, you can generate and draw two or three different resonance structures. And uh, you want to be able to say, this one's the best, this one's the worst, okay? The best resonance structure is gonna be the major contributor to the resonance hybrid. The worst resonance structure is gonna be the minor contributor to the resonance structure. And sometimes you even generate things that are invalid. You don't wanna generate things that are invalid and say that's an answer, it's invalid. You know, you just don't draw the invalid structures, okay? Um, this is the hierarchy of how you decide which resonance structures is the best. The first thing you do is you look for the octet rule, okay? If in a particular structure all atoms have an octet, that's the best resonance structure compared to the other ones where there is not an octet. Let me give you a couple of examples. Let's look at this particular structure. Uh, carbon has only six electrons. It does not have an octet. If we generate and draw an additional resonance structure, we can see that um, carbon here has an octet. So we would say this is the major contributor and this is the minor contributor. Okay. This particular example only has two structures, okay? In general chemistry, you learned about boron being an exception to the octet rule. It can have six electrons. But let's look at this for a little bit. There's lone pairs next to an empty p orbital. So it's possible for lone pairs from the bromine to enter in. Probably should have selected chlorine instead of bromine. There's too many Bs here on the board. Now, according to what I'm saying right here, um, you evaluate based on the octet rule, okay? Uh, there are some things bad about this structure, uh, but let's just look at the octet rule. Over here, we have six electrons on boron. Over here, we have eight electrons on boron. Bromine still has an octet uh, everywhere. So according to that criteria, we would say this is the major contributor and this is the minor contributor. For boron, the situation is kind of complicated. But for nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon, it's very straightforward. If you have an octet in one of the structures, that's gonna be the major structure compared to the other ones that do not have an octet, okay? Let's look at electronegativity. This structure here is our starting structure, okay? Uh, if you're counting things, uh, everything has an octet, it's good. Well, except the hydrogen, but everything has an octet, it's good. So let's generate and draw an additional resonance structure. I'm 
not going through the process of figuring out where those bonds go and where the charges go. I'm just drawing it quick. And what I'm focusing on here today is describing how you decide if it's a good, bad, you know, resonance structure. Uh, everything here on the right has an octet. So octet, octet, all right, uh, what do we do next? You look at electronegativity. Remember in your periodic table um, for organic chemistry, it's very simple, right? The electronegativity uh, increases towards the right and up here. So this is the atoms that you would want to have a negative charge. So we look at nitrogen with a negative charge or oxygen with a negative charge. We know that oxygen is more further to the right in the periodic table, happier, you know, more electronegative than nitrogen, so it's happier with a negative charge. And so we would say this structure right here is the major contributor to the overall resonance hybrid, and this one's the minor. Okay, that one would be the minor. All right, how many raise the board? Let me try to think of another example where you have electronegativity involved. Um, well, I can't think of one. All right, so let's talk about more bonding, uh, less charge separation. So for example, This is nitromethane. It's used in drag racing. Uh, it has a tremendous amount of energy built into it. Uh, I, I think drag racers might call it nitro, you know, and you're kind of familiar, oh, okay, it speeds up your car or something. So nitromethane is an extremely uh, powerful fuel uh, for propelling those drag racers down the track at whatever miles per hour. And it's quite a reactive compound because of this, these charges here, you know, opposites attract and, and this is a frustrated molecule. The textbook describes to you how this is an invalid resonance structure because if you draw that, you're gonna have five bonds on nitrogen, which is 10 electrons that exceeds the octet. So you don't wanna do that. What you can do is push these electrons up to this oxygen atom. that you get an equivalent resonance structure. An equivalent resonance structure is something with equal numbers of pi bonds and equal numbers of uh, negative charge on the same types of atoms. So we have a negative one on an oxygen atom and we have a nitrogen oxygen pi bond and we have a nitrogen with a positive charge. Now they're in different locations so it's a resonance structure but these are equivalent. We can't say that's major or that's we have to say they're both equal. Now, what's an invalid uh, structure would be something with more charge separation and less bonding. So if you started with the nitromethane, and if you try to move these electrons towards the oxygen, You're breaking a pi bond, all right? You don't have a pi bond over here, and you're creating more charges that are further separated from one another. So this is what you would call um, an invalid structure, okay? This is definitely um, invalid, okay? I would not ever draw that as a valid resonance structure when you can draw these other ones that are extremely good. A valid lead resonance structure that you can draw that's not as good as the original would be as follows.
And so uh, you can very easily decide between these two using rule number one, which is the octet, right? Everything has an octet here, not here. Okay, so we would say that's the major contributor and that's the minor contributor. You could also further analyze it and you could decide that, well, this one here has less of a pi bond, one less pi bond, and it has charges that are separated. So that's what makes it unstable. Why don't we break the pi bond this way? basic idea why we don't break the pi bond this way is because um, oxygen is an electronegative atom. It likes to have a negative charge, not a positive charge. So this is definitely way out of the ballpark in terms of being valid. Okay, so don't ever draw something like, like that. That's really, really, really bad. Now, if you're asked to draw a resonance structure of this, there's only one thing you could think of, and you're going to have to draw something without an octet on carbon. So that's the only choice. This would be the major, and this would be the minor. Okay. How much of a minor? Definitely not equal. It might be 5% or 10% contributing to the overall average of what the molecule really looks like. Okay, So the book has a much better description in this section, so I urge you to uh, read section 211 at the very end when you're looking at these resonance structures.